Hey everyone, thanks for watching Test 2 Plus. I'm Trace. This is a podcast style show. We take one topic and we cover it for five videos. This week, we're talking about death. It's a really big topic, I know, but it also is not as sad as you might think. Yesterday, we talked about how you even know that you are dead. Not necessarily you, but other people. How we know legally you're dead, so check that out if you haven't. But for this episode, let's just assume you're dead, okay? So now what? What happens at and also after death? The difficult to describe moment is death itself. It's legally very difficult and it's also sort of a gray area. But scientifically speaking and medically speaking, when the brain dies, it's usually from a lack of blood flow. And when the brain dies, it kind of takes the rest of uh, the body with it. So EEG scans done and studies of patients at the time of death found that there is a burst of energy right at the moment of death. That's 30 to 180 seconds of this burst of, of this flurry of activity. It's kind of insane. That burst of brain activity is what's associated with near-death experiences. It's been described as a cascade of energy. So as cells move around your brain or as this energy moves around your brain cells, memories are triggered and feelings happen. And that's where near-death experiences, or so they think, come from. Seizures originating in brain areas that are irritable from oxygen starvation can cause all sorts of other problems when it comes to near-death experiences and also that flurry of activity. Brain cells, in general, while you're alive, are constantly electrically charged. And that electrical charge is kind of like a magnet, so it adds a polarity to your brain cells. And when you die, that gets all messed up. And it's not like it just suddenly turns off. It kind of fizzles out because there's no oxygen. And no oxygen means no energy. No energy means no polarity. And that fizzling out is what causes that burst of energy, that cascade through your entire brain. But it's not just the lack of oxygen that causes death. At the moment of death, the brain sends a signal to the heart and it, that heart ends up beating really strange and it causes damage to the organ itself. So in a study done with rats, scientists blocked the signals sent from the brain to the heart that damaged the heart. And it turned out that if you block those signals, the heart is fine. But if you don't block those signals, the heart is so damaged that even if you could recover from this moment of death, your heart wouldn't work. It's sort of like your brain is saying, okay, it's time to go, we're good. It's sort of like whole body apoptosis. Apoptosis is something that when a cell is determined to not need it be needed anymore, or it, it, when it gets a certain chemical marker, it kills itself. It's a self-suicide that cells tend to do. And occasionally, apparently, this happens as well in larger or wider systems, like the heart-brain connection. So as death becomes close, the heart and brain sync up in terms of their activity. Researchers observed a flood of more than a dozen different neurochemicals, including dopamine, which produces feelings of pleasure, norepinephrine, which produces feelings of alertness, which is why near-death experiences, they think, feel realer than real, because you're flooded with all of these neurochemicals, all of this cascading energy, as well as an alertness mixed with a pleasure, and that is how people often describe their near-death experiences. Very warm, very comforting. This flurry goes through all your memory circuits and memories get tossed everywhere and, and it, just, it just goes insane. This is what science can tell us, of course, about these feelings. But what about actual experiences, near-death experiences as described by the people who lived them? If you've ever had one, make sure you tell us down in the comments or if you know anyone who's had one, or if you just know of a cool near-death experience story. They're really interesting. So 3% of the US population has had a near-death experience. This is according to Gallup. And I was looking around for some of these experiences, the ones that I could trust, and I went to Reddit, not because I felt like I could trust them more, but because I thought it would be an interesting selection of stories, because it's more or less an atheist website. So you're not gonna get a lot of religious experiences, which are essentially similar near-death experiences. I wanted something a little different. So when you read the comments on this near-death experiences thread that I found, you get things like fading to black, peaceful feelings, like sleeping with no dreams, which is pretty interesting. Essentially, that 
describes people who kind of disappear from one place and wake up in the hospital or in, a, in an ambulance or something like that. So they're maybe playing basketball and the next thing they know they're on an operating table. That is sort of what they describe it. But the best one that I found was, was this one. The realization of death sunk in. This intense sensation of a warm motherly presence started to materialize and she insisted to stay calm. There's nothing to worry about. Isn't that crazy? Which, again, does sound very similar to being flooded with neurochemicals and experiencing a flurry of activity in the brain. It's, it's kind of crazy, right? That science is sort of able to describe these feelings. A 2005 study found that out-of-body experiences can actually be artificially triggered in people. And what happens is if you stimulate Electrical, uh, electrically stimulate the right temporoparietal junction. Temporoparietal, parietal. Sorry, I can never say these brain terms. Temporoparietal junction. It changes how, not so much triggering a near death experience, but changes how we experience our physical body. And when you change that, it makes it feel as if your body is apart from you. And that is part of a lot of people's near-death experiences. Parkinson's disease patients sometimes report visions of ghosts, which is also related to near-death experience, or monsters, again, related. Because what's happening is the disease is affecting their dopamine reception and their dopamine uh, excretion, which can cause hallucinations. You can also get stories of people moving through a tunnel toward a bright light, and that happens and they don't know why. But a lot of people experience it. They think it might have to do with blood flow being restricted to the eye because when that happens, even in healthy people, tunnel vision results. However, none of these things explain all of the things that you would find in a near-death experience. Discoverynews.com reported in 2012 about a specific neurospecialist who had bacterial meningitis and it hit him very quickly. And in 2008, it attacked his neocortex and it inactivated it. It deactivated a part of his brain that deals with sensory perception and conscious thought. The man described big, puffy, pink-white clouds against a deep blue-black sky and flocks of transparent, shimmering beings that were quite simply different from anything he had ever known on this planet. This is what he could see. He could see this stuff. He said a woman spoke to him and told him he was cherished and important. And then he awoke in a hospital. He'd been gone for seven days and he'd been in a coma. The thing is, science can't really explain these experiences. This man knows the brain. That's his job. He studies the brain. And he was still floored by the realness of this experience that it changed his life forever. And just because we can't explain it with science doesn't mean that it's not profound, it doesn't mean that it's not important, and even if we could explain every single thing, that also doesn't mean that it's not profound, that it's not important. Anecdotal evidence aside, a lot of the world believes in an afterlife. And we all wanna know that there's more than just the suffering and the pain that exists in this world but at the same time, there's no one who knows except for the people that have already been there. So while science may not be able to explain all of it, it's pretty amazing what it can explain. If you ever had a near-death experience or if you have an interesting after-death opinion, go down into the comments, tell us about it. And for more Test Tube Plus, make sure you subscribe and check out what happens to your body once you're evicted from it because that's tomorrow. It's gonna be really, really gross, and it's amazing. <laughs> and if you're looking for more Test 2 Plus, check out yesterday's video about whether we know you're dead legally. And if you've already seen that one, we've got lots of other episodes on our websites, so make sure you check those out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.